Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, stories, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy to my right from within the digital infrastructure industry. And we are coming at you live. That's right. We are live right now. You're alive. I'm alive. We're all alive right now. That's, that's right. From Data Cloud USA, co-located with Metro Connect and beautiful Austin, Texas, keeping it weird on JSA TV. And this gentleman to my right is Mr. Matt Monaco. Matt is the SVP of Asset Management and Development at Powerhouse Data Centers. That was a mouthful. Matt, how are you? I'm great. How are things with you? Things are things are good. We are four interviews into day one, so my lips are finally starting to work now, uh, and so that's good. But for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell us a little bit about Powerhouse and uh, some of the, the new uh, and exciting things coming out of your newsroom right now? Sure. Um, so uh, Powerhouse is a data center developer and owner. Uh, we're, we're operating uh, across the U.S., um, and uh, I guess mo most interesting to talk about here, given that we're in Austin, is our, our new project. We're really excited to be partnering with Big Watt Digital on our uh, ADX1 campus, which is in the South Austin area. Uh, this is a one gigawatt site that's designed from the ground up for hyperscale AI. Uh, and we are extremely excited to uh, be here in Austin to talk about this new project. Well, let's talk about it then. Um, but uh, I, there's a couple of things specifically I would like to talk about. Now, Powerhouse, I understand, like you guys do a lot of partnering with local utilities, et cetera. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how those those partnerships work, maybe even specific to Austin? Yeah, sure. So the, the partnerships are different market by market. Um, uh, you know, the utility partnerships are a key part of our approach to the market. Uh, we build deep relationships with the utilities. Uh, wherever we have opportunities, we work with utilities on multiple projects. Once mm -hmm. we've uh, set up agreements and built good relationships, we create a lot of scale by working with them uh, you know, on multiple projects. Uh, specifically, the project in Austin, it's been great working with L uh, LCRA. Mm -hmm. uh, this project also has on-site gas generation. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of power to get to a gigawatt. You You're going to be a talking lot, a lot about power. <laughs> a lot of different sources of power. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's uh, at all the deals we do are partnerships. We, we work in JVs of all different kinds. Mm -hmm. That's another core tenant of our business. Um, and it, it's really about, again, building the trust, figuring out how to work together effectively, yeah. um, you know, finding utilities that uh, are well integrated with the community and, and really partnering, uh, you know, with them to build and then rinse and repeat. Well, you mentioned into integrating within the community. That does seem to be a kind of a core tenant at, at Powerhouse, making sure that you are integrating with the utility, integrating with uh, you know the power providers and, and understanding the resource use and things like that, being good stewards of the community. I, I, you, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, that's a that's a key part of what we do, um, and and it's it's a similar approach. You know, it, it, partnership is is really at the core of what we do. Um, you know, the, the data center game in some ways is pretty simple. You've got to find locations that have power, water, fiber, uh, and communities that are looking to have data centers. Yeah. And it's really a, a matter of figuring out the overlap between those uh -huh. four um, and then working with the community and the utilities, so power utilities, water utilities, sewer utilities to figure out. Uh, you know, what, what's the situation in the market? Is there, uh, is it a, an abundant area for water? Is it a scarce area for water? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then figuring out, you know, one of the big trade-offs you know, with, with power and water is if you use more water, uh, you can operate with less energy per unit of compute yeah. uh, output. So if you have a lot of water, there's certainly uh, tenants out there who prefer to use a little more water to use a little less power. If you have less water, uh, then there's an opportunity to use a little bit less water uh, and, and a little more power. So it's about figuring out with the community, with the utilities, with the customer, what do they need and how do we, you know, kind of move all the pieces in to make it work for everyone. Matt, that's a very, very interesting point and not one that I've heard many people make as far as like kind of the trade-offs with, with water and power and how, you know, I, I think about my furnace, like if I've got a, a like a really high flow filter in there, it's going to move a lot of air, but it might not trap as many contaminants. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like there's a little bit of a give and take with that. There, there is. And I mean, I, I've oversimplified it grossly. Uh, <laughs> Thank and, you. No, and, I appreciate and, that very and, much. And, and, <laughs> and I'm not an engineer for the record, but... Uh, <laughs> 
you but, are but, today. But but yes, I mean that is that is a big part of it is just figuring out you know what kind of efficiency and and really finding the sweet spot between how much water you're using and how much power you're using. Um, you know, from a green perspective, yeah, but, but yeah. from also. Uh, part of being green is being in line with what the community needs and what that, you know, whatever the resources that are available there, use more of what's in abundance, use less of what's not in a given location. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. But uh, there's another thing that you mentioned that I haven't heard other people mention, and that is the um, fiber. Making sure uh, it's it's almost like fiber is another one of those kind of resources that are necessary to make this work. And we don't hear a lot of folks talking about that being as necessary when we're talking about power and, and water and things like that. I mean, fibers, fibers, a must have. I mean, the good news is, you know, fiber is the modern equivalent of the interstate highway system. Yeah. And that's usually where you find the fiber is, is running along uh, train system, yeah. you know, train tracks, highways. Uh, and it's critical uh, to, to be able to have fiber that's in the area from a cost perspective and from a time to market perspective. If you have fiber nearby, you're going to get to market faster and it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you're in a location that might have some of those other factors, but you're trenching, you know, five, 10 miles of fiber. That's, that's a, a longer putt. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I went off script a little bit. Hopefully that was okay. All, all um, good. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. You're doing great for not being an engineer. So I appreciate that very much. So, um, so Matt, uh, get out your crystal ball. Um, what is it? What is it that you are seeing in the future? Where's the industry going specifically from your seat? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think as you probably have heard before, and we'll hear again today, is things are getting bigger, uh, bigger, bigger buildings. You know, buildings used to be, you know, seventy-five megawatt buildings. Now you're looking at hundred megawatt buildings, yeah. even bigger buildings yeah. in some cases. And the bigger buildings are part of bigger campuses. So now you know a big campus could be a gigawatt or two gigawatts as opposed to, you know, what might have been 300 or 500 yeah. megawatts in the past. Um, you know, rapid time to power and, and rapid time to service is still, um, you know, at the top of the list. And I don't think that's going to change anytime yeah. soon. Um, you know, and, and I think, again, as you said, it's about figuring out, um, you know, as the technology evolves, there's technology to use less water. Uh, there's all kinds of innovations that are happening. And so it's always figuring out, again, in that given si uh, situation with the resources that are available mm -hmm. there, figuring out how to create the best solution that is solving for the community. It's solving for what the customers need and, uh, you know, and, and solving for, for the needs of the company and our investors. I love it, Matt. Thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks, Dean. You bet. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you real soon.